Okay, today's video is going to be about how to add markers onto a Google Map loaded with the Google Maps JavaScript API, as well as how to listen for events, whether they're on the map or they're on the markers. So I have a very basic Cordova app that I've loaded onto the iOS simulator here. I can drag this around. You can see I've got no controls shown on the map, but I have created a map. It is interactive. Now I've added a click listener, or sorry, a double click listener to my map. So I can double click to add a marker. And I can double click as many times as I want all over the map to add these markers. When I add the markers, I'm also adding listeners to the markers. So I'm adding a click listener and a double click listener to each marker. The click listener will pan the map to that location. So as I click on these markers, the map is going to pan to put that marker in the middle. If I do a double click, it removes the marker. So that's what we've got going right now. Double click will remove it. Click will pan to that location. Okay, so let's take a look at the code and see how that works. Um, if you're wanting to test any of your console log statements, if you've got the simulator running, remember you can open up Safari, go to the developer menu, find your simulator here or a device if it's plugged in. Open up that app if you're running a Cordova app. And in here you can see the console and you can look at the console log statements. All right, I'm going to jump into the code now. Now this is a Cordova app, meaning uh, I am using the Cordova framework to bundle up my web page as a iOS application. But the script that I'm writing, most of the script is going to be the exact same. It's just the way I've structured the script that will be slightly different. So if you're just doing this on a regular web page, don't worry this code that I'm putting inside of here, this is going to work for you. You just won't have things like the device ready event. Okay, so um, I have inside my main object here. So I've got all of my code inside this object called app. Inside of that, I've got various properties. Map, which is where I'm going to put a reference to my Google Map object. So I've got that as sort of a, a global property. Current marker. As I'm clicking or double clicking on these markers, I'm setting this property equal to a reference to that marker so I can keep track of it even after the click or after the double click. I want a reference to this thing. Default position. This is a basic little object with one property which has two properties inside of it and they've got numbers. This is the default coordinates that I'm going to use on the map if geolocation fails or if I'm not able to get the coordinates, if the person denies the coordinates, this is my default position. All right, my init function, very first function, this is the one that gets called to start the whole thing ro rolling. If you're doing Cordova, you're listening for device ready. If you're just doing this as a regular web page, this would be the DOM content loaded event that you're waiting for. App.ready, so I'm going to call the ready function when this event happens. Whether this is DOM content loaded or device ready doesn't matter. I'm just going to call this function. Inside the function, I'm loading the Google Maps script. That's all I'm doing. And I've got an event listener for when the script has finished loading. That's my map script ready. That's going to call this function. This function is now going to try to get the geolocation. So I set up my options for my geolocation call. I call get current position. I've got my callbacks for success, for failure, and these options being passed in. Now, if geolocation is not supported in the browser, that's where I'm going to call my got position, which is the success function here. But I'm going to pass in that default position that I created up at the top. So I've got a default location that's going to work if this fails. Now, Sorry, rather not if it fails, if it's not supported. If it fails, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So this line of code, this is going to be the exact same down here at the bottom of the file. Here's my fail position. This is the error callback for geolocation. Same line of code. Got position is the function I'm going to call, and I'm going to pass in that default that I defined. All right, jumping back up. So got position, that was our success function. Inside there. I'm going to create a new Google Maps map. This is the point. This is the thing that we're trying to get to. We're creating the map, centering it where 
we found the position or whatever position we passed in, whether it was our default one or the real one that's being passed in. And then I'm going to add some listeners. Now you can add whatever listeners you want. The only one that I added was a double click. And this is how you do it. It's very much like you'd add a DOM listener to any DOM element in a web page. App.map, that is my sort of global property where I'm storing the reference. And we can see right here where I created the new Google Map, I'm putting it into app.map. So this is stored outside of this function so I can access it from anywhere. Very important to have this global reference that you can keep going back to to get a reference to the map if you want to add or remove a listener at some other point. I do want to do that. I want to add the double click listener, so I need this reference. Add listener is the method. This is a method that belongs to the Google Map object. This is the one I'm listening for, the event that I'm listening for, and this is the function I'm going to call right here. So when somebody double clicks anywhere on the map, this is the function that's going to run. Now, markers, those little circles with the point at the bottom. Those are the marker objects. We create them in the same way we create a map. New Google Maps, and but instead of map, it's marker. We're creating a marker, and again, we pass in an object with various properties. You need to say what map it belongs to because you can have multiple maps on the same page. So we're telling it app.map. That was our global one. This is where we're going to put the marker. Whether or not the person's allowed to move the marker, draggable, true or false. And then the position, well, I'm going to be getting the position back from the event. Now remember, this function runs when somebody double clicks on the map. So an event object is being passed here the event object is going to have a property called lat long. L -A -T -L -N -G. That lat long has two methods inside of it, lat and long. These will return the latitude and longitude coordinates of wherever the person double clicked. That's what we're passing into the position object to create the marker. So the marker knows where on the map it's supposed to appear. Once I've added the marker, now I have here a local variable called marker. That's storing my reference to this. I could call it without that. I mean, I could just say new Google Maps marker and it would create one, but I wouldn't have a reference to it, so I couldn't do anything to it afterwards. I need to have a reference to it because I want to add listeners. Click and double click. I've got a different function, one for each. So when the person clicks, I'm going to call marker click. When they double click, I'm going to call my function that's called marker double click. So let's take a look at those. Marker click. Now I'm just doing some console log statements. Marker equals this. Now this is one way that we can do this. With the click or double click event, whatever the event is, inside this function, if you use the keyword this, you will be getting a reference to whatever the object was. Was it a marker? Was it a map? Was it an info window? We get a reference to that object using the keyword this. So that works great. Now I can put that into a local variable that works inside my function here, let marker equal that. But if you're going to go on to use the reference to that marker in some other functions, what I recommend you do is you have a global property, just like we did for the map app dot current marker, the one that was just clicked or double clicked or dragged or whatever's happening to it. We're taking our local variable. I could put this here as well. That would work. Put that into this global property so I can access it from anywhere in my code. And then the thing that makes the map move to wherever the marker is, the global map object has a property or method rather called pan two. You pass in coordinates, a lat latitude, longitude coordinate for where that marker is. And that's where the map will pan to. So it sort of scrolls over to that location. Now, get position is a method that's built into the marker. Every marker object has a method called get position. So I could have done app.currentmarker.getPosition or my local variable marker.getPosition. Either one's going to work. As long as the pan2 method gets a lat long object, this is going to work. The last step was removing the marker, 
Again, we can use this into a local variable or the global one. You call marker.setMap. SetMap, again, it's a method that belongs to every single marker on the page. So if you had created a marker but you hadn't assigned it to a map yet, you could do this. Marker.setMap, you put the reference to the map inside of there, app.map, and then it would put the marker on the map. So let's say you needed to create a bunch of them ahead of time and then one by one add them to the, mar to the map. You could use set map to do it. But more likely, you want to remove the marker that's already on the map. So you say set map is null. This is what will actually delete it. And then this extra line of code that I've got right here is to clear out my global property, put it back to null to make sure I don't try to do something with it at some point in the future. Okay, so that's it. That's how to create markers, how to remove markers, how to add events to the map, how to add events to the marker. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a copy of this whole file as a code just in the description for you. And as always, thanks for watching.